Who is getting Deshaun Watson? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of NFL Offseason Rumors. Deshaun Watson today is visiting the Atlanta Falcons. He already visited the Carolina Panthers, the Cleveland Browns, now he, also the New Orleans Saints, now he's visiting the Falcons. These are the four teams in contention for Deshaun Watson. So as the situation currently stands, the four teams that he's visited or is visiting now, all their trade proposals have already been accepted by the Houston Texans. So this is Deshaun Watson deciding which one of these four teams he wants to to go to. Now it's been rumored that the Houston Texans want around six assets. You know, when it comes to a team like the Cleveland Browns, who, who I'm going to talk about, I would say you're looking at a package like a Greg Newsom, the young cornerback, Baker Mayfield, three first round picks and two second round picks. If Deshaun Watson chose the Browns, I would expect a package like that. I've also heard maybe Kareem Hunt, although that doesn't make too much sense to me considering Houston's looking to rebuild. They could go with Baker for a year, see if he's their guy, then draft a quarterback, and you'd also be giving up three first-round picks in the next three years and two second-round picks for Deshaun Watson. The Houston Texans want six elite assets back. And I'm sure all four of these teams are offering three first-round picks. Houston's okayed all these deals, apparently, and it's up to Deshaun Watson as he continues to visit these teams where he wants to go. Now, this situation has already impacted Baker Mayfield, who wrote kind of a love letter, uh, you know, last night on Twitter to Browns fans saying it's been great in Cleveland. He thinks he's gone. At this point, the Cleveland Browns need to land Deshaun Watson. This is a super team in the making. If they don't get Deshaun Watson and you've already fractured your relationship with Baker Mayfield where he's on Twitter putting out letters saying goodbye to Cleveland, but if Deshaun Watson doesn't pick you, this could be a very rough situation which might force Cleveland to to trade Baker Mayfield and have to acquire someone like Jimmy G. And then at that point, is like, is Jimmy G an upgrade from a healthy Baker Mayfield? I don't think so. I don't think he is. But the situation with Deshaun Watson, it's between four teams. He's already visited Carolina, New Orleans, Cleveland. He is visiting Atlanta today. Adam Schefter, I just saw him on ESPN. He said he expects Deshaun Watson to stay in the South Although he's not ruling Cleveland out, he's expecting Deshaun Watson to stay in the South. So that puts the Browns at a very odd dynamic when it comes to this whole situation with Baker Mayfield already putting that statement out on Twitter. Kind of surprising. I just thought if they weren't able to get Deshaun Watson, they would bring Baker, Mac, B Baker Mac back. But we're seeing reports that the Browns quarterback could be gone even if they fail to land Deshaun Watson, which at that point it's like, does Baker Mayfield go to the Colts? I think that'd be a pretty good spot for Baker Mayfield to the Colts. Do the Browns go after someone like Jimmy G? Is Jimmy G even an upgrade over a healthy Baker Mayfield? He certainly doesn't have a highest ceiling as a healthy Baker Mayfield. I don't think so. I don't think Jimmy G is an upgrade over a healthy Baker Mayfield. And you kind of have Jimmy G for one year as a stopgap guy, but it is an interesting situation. Whoever gets the Sean Watson is going to have to pony up three first-round picks, very likely two second-round picks, along with at least two young assets. Also, the Browns kind of with an under-the-radar signing. Jakeem Grant, the stud punt returner, kick returner, a three-year contract up to around $14 million. I love this signing. I would tell him, listen, just focus on returns, kick returns, punt returns. This kid has a lot of wiggle. You put him on there for a trick play on the offense, maybe an end around, something like that. I love that signing. The Browns still do need another receiver, I would say. You've got Amari Cooper. You've got Donovan Peoples-Jones. But you're still probably looking at needing another receiver. Now, if you trade for Deshaun Watson, you're not going to have any sort of assets in terms of draft capital to, capital to get that receiver. You would have to sign probably a veteran that Deshaun Watson recruits to you. So just some interesting stuff there. Also, there's been some speculation. Uh, if the Falcons do end up landing Deshaun Watson, where does that put Matt Ryan? And this is just something I'm speculating. I've seen it a few times. Matt Ryan potentially to the Indianapolis Colts could be a scenario that ends up happening. If I was a Colts fan, I would lynch myself, honestly. I mean, my goodness, you go from Phillip Rivers to... 
Uh, Carson Wentz to Matt Ryan, just average on top of average. And as a Browns fan, I'm very scared if this Deshaun Watson thing fall, things falls through. You get a guy like Jimmy G. I'm I'm just not a fan of Jimmy G. I'm really not. I would rather just stick with Baker. But it re- it looks like according to some tweets, according to what's gone on since the end of the season, the Browns' relationship with Baker Mayfield is at a point where it's not repairable. And you know, if you're Baker Mayfield and you're putting out that letter last night to Cleveland fans, basically saying goodbye. I think the writing's on the wall that Baker Mayfield, whether or not the Browns land Deshaun Watson, you know, I would say maybe around a 20% chance there's four teams involved, 20% chance they get him. If they don't get him, you're still going to be looking at the Browns replacing Baker Mayfield and and trading Baker Mayfield for whatever they can get for him in that scenario. But just some interesting stuff there. The Saints are doing some witchcraft magic with their salary cap again. They freed up $80 million in cap space over the past few weeks without outright releasing a single player from their signed roster. The cap situation, the cap isn't fake, but it's mighty fluid. So I don't think people are understanding. Yeah, the Saints keep getting under the cap. We understand that, but they're not signing anyone. They have no flexibility to sign anyone, and then if they get to Sean Watson, they're going to have to start outright releasing guys. What they've been able to do is turn guaranteed money into signing bonuses, defer money over the course of the next year, and what the Saints are betting on is that the salary cap in the NFL will continue to rise, which will aid the money that they are deferring to 2023, 2024, we've seen them restructure several contracts, including Michael Thomas. They're restructuring that money, pushing the money back, which will allow for them to be under the cap this year. It really is an interesting strategy, but again, with the Saints, you're at a point where it's so tough for you to sign any free agents because you're so worried about that damn salary cap number and getting under it and manipulating players' contracts and turning guaranteed money into signing bonuses and all this different stuff. So people are like, wow, the salary cap is fake. No, I I mean, if, if you're the Saints, you would much rather have $30, $30 million in free money to spend. Obviously, the salary cap isn't fake if they're constantly having to rework deals to get under the salary cap, right? They keep deferring money. They keep giving out bonuses. So people say, this is, you know, you don't have to worry about the salary cap. They're not able to sign anyone. They're not able, they, you know, they have to worry about getting under it. They can't sign anyone new. That is the New Orleans Saints problem. And it's just kind of interesting how it always happens. So this is kind of the current price for Deshaun Watson. This is speculation. We don't know for sure. Browns fans, would you make this trade? Three first round picks, two third round picks. I I think you'd have to give up two second round picks, but two third round picks, Baker Mayfield, Kareem Hunt, and Denzel Ward. It's a lot. I don't know. Again, I don't know why they would really want Kareem Hunt if you're rebuilding. Uh, Denzel Ward as well. If if I'm Houston, I would much rather have uh, Newsome than Ward. Ward has concussion issues and he's going to be due a massive contract. You're going to have to commit a lot of money to him in the coming years where Newsome still has four years left on his rookie deal if you accept his fifth year option. So I would think Houston would be saying, we want Newsome, not Denzel Ward, even though Ward is a better player. He has concussion concerns and he's due a massive contract. If you're Houston, you want a younger guy to grow with your young team and your young nucleus. So I think they would rather have Newsom instead of Ward. Kareem Hunt, I mean, get a good run. Kareem Hunt's a really good running back. I, the Browns, I guess, would give him up. They still have Nick Chubb. So And then Baker Mayfield, you know, that that one's obvious. You get Deshaun Watson, you can give, give up Baker Mayfield. From Houston's point of view, you know, you have Baker Mayfield for a year. If it doesn't work out, he's only signed for one year. If he shows promise, you can extend him. Uh, and then the two third round picks and the three first round picks. The three first round picks, I believe, are a mandatory ask by, ask by Houston. That's been kind of the rumor going around that you're going to have to give up three first round picks if you want Deshaun Watson. It's a real steep price to pay. But the idea is you get Deshaun Watson and then Deshaun Watson will recruit a veteran receiver for you. Also, if I'm the Browns and you are not able to re-sign Jadavian Clowney, I would look at someone like a Zendarius Smith, like a Miles Jack. Try and build this super team through free agency. They just released Austin Hooper, which is going to save them some money. It's a it's a post, I believe, June 1st type cut, so they're going to save money releasing Austin Hooper. It says, one of the worst contracts in football is being redesignated as a post-June 1st release. The move will clear around $10 million off the books this summer. 
Austin Hooper, what a complete bust that contract was. But if you're the Cleveland Browns, you do need more receiver help. You've got Amari Cooper. It becomes a lot easier to find that receiver help if you don't trade for Deshaun Watson because then you would still have a first-round pick, a second-round pick in an absolutely loaded receiver draft class. But this Deshaun Watson thing right now, the team that I have heard from the beginning that is in on Deshaun Watson is Carolina. They've been a player. I'm not saying that, you know, that's guaranteeing Deshaun Watson to Carolina. They've been the one team that's been in on him for a while. Ultimately, this is going to come down to who is Deshaun Watson want to play with? He's hearing pitches from all these teams. He's meeting with teams. And once this situation comes to a head, you're going to see a lot of other guys start signing. There's a, apparently a bunch of guys waiting for Deshaun Watson to sign, to uh, make a move and to, uh, you know, announce that he wants to be traded here to actually sign with a team. So they're waiting for to see what Deshaun Watson does, what team he goes to. I would say probably is going to be staying in the South. I'm sure the Browns can make a great offer. They went down to meet Deshaun Watson. I'm sure they made a nice offer. But overall, it's going to be Deshaun Watson's decision. And you're talking about New Orleans which you've got Alvin Kamara, you've got Michael Thomas, you've got some weapons down there. They do need to re-sign Teron Armstead, their left tackle. Uh, again, their cap situation is just such a mess, and then you'd be bringing on Deshaun Watson's massive cap hit as well. I don't know how they would make that work. They, I think they would have to just straight up release guys at that point or just trade them for nothing. Trade them for nothing because you, there's just not enough cap room at that point. Deshaun Watson has an absurdly high cap hit, if you guys don't know. I think he has the highest of any quarterback this year. Or maybe that is Matt Ryan, although they restructured Matt Ryan's contract. But it's down to Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina and Cleveland. Those are the four teams. He's met with three of them. He's meeting with Atlanta right now as we speak, and we would expect a decision within the next few days, unless maybe another team he wants to meet with, they get a trade offer. It gets okayed by Houston. These teams, their trade offers have all been okayed, meaning the Cleveland Browns put together a trade offer, and Houston said, we will accept this if Deshaun waves his no trade clause to Cleveland. That's how Cleveland was able to meet with Deshaun Watson. Same thing with Carolina, same thing with Atlanta, same thing with New Orleans. I'm guessing all these teams are offering three first round picks, probably multiple second round picks, along with young assets. You know, in Cleveland's case, it would be a Newsome or maybe a Denzel Ward, maybe Kareem Hunt, someone like that, along with Baker Mayfield. This is a massive trade package. And if you're the Browns, you know, I'm a Browns fan, this would be unbelievable. I mean, you're getting a top five quarterback. I am obs I'm a person that is obsessed with assets. I love first round picks. The only time I recommend teams trading first round picks, multiple first round picks, is in the in, in the event you can get a franchise quarterback. And Deshaun Watson is 1,000% a franchise quarterback. You know, you get into his uh, his history with, uh, you know, the cases, him not playing last year. You know, that's a whole nother conversation. Where Deshaun Watson, the football player, as long as he's not facing any sort of suspension or anything like that, it's an unbelievable get. This is a top five player. He's young. He signed through 2025, and that's why the Browns are trying to make this happen. They realize at this point that Baker probably isn't the guy. That relationship is severed, and, you know, it's time to move on. I'm just worried if Deshaun Watson declines to come to Cleveland, the Browns are in a situation where you've already alienated Baker, and now it's like, do you trade for Jimmy G? I would just rather have Baker than Jimmy G. I think Baker's better when he's healthy. I'm being honest, guys. I, I just don't like Jimmy G at all. I think he's very average. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But that's the big news. Deshaun Watson, where is he going? We, we There were some other th big things that happened yesterday. Randy Gregory, right? He looked like he was going to resign with Dallas. He goes to Denver because Dallas changed the contract at the last second. Some crazy stuff there. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.